Are you interested in playing Warhammer 40,000? Well, good news! Warhammer is one of the easiest ways to get into wargaming. It's worth mentioning that Warhammer isn't the only way to get into wargaming. Wargaming is a broader subject than just Warhammer and Games Workshop, but I find that Warhammer makes it really easy to get into wargaming, and so it's probably worth checking out. But I do have a separate video for you if you're not into Warhammer. If it just doesn't appeal to you, go and watch that video. War Gaming requires a lot of preparation before you can actually play the game. This is really different than what you're probably used to if you play other tabletop games. You don't just go to the store, buy a box, and start playing. You have to build and paint miniatures, you need to read the rules and set up a battlefield. This video breaks this process down into five easy steps. Step one, get the rules and read them. Get the Warhammer 40,000 rules as a zero dollar download from warhammer-community.com. Really, you want to do this first because if you read the rules and you decide you're not interested in playing the game, that's, that's better to know now before you've spent any money. So read the rules cover to cover. It's about 60 pages, which seems like a lot for a board game, but it's pretty typical if you're used to, for instance, a tabletop role-playing game. And anyway, my Fallout board game and Mansions of Madness, they have like two books of rules, each about 20 pages, so it's not that far off. And the Warhammer rules have a lot of pit photos and, and graphics, so it's not like 60 pages of text. Step two, buy a combat patrol box. This is where I went wrong initially. I didn't do this, I wish I had. The easiest way to start playing is to just get a combat patrol box, they sell them in the game's workshop stores, containing a playable army that you like. Now here's the thing about that. Combat patrol is a special mode of the game. The rules that you'll have downloaded and read talk about three different modes of play. Incursion, strike force, and onslaught. That's a thousand point army, 2,000 point army, 3,000 point army, respectively. Using a combat patrol box is sort of a fourth mode of play, and you don't have to worry about points, you don't have to worry about building an army or an army list or anything like that. You just buy the box and you are ready to go after you build and paint them. Now because it's a special mode of play, you need special missions for, for your game, but Every combat patrol box comes with special missions for you to play. There are also more missions for combat patrol on page 208 of the physical Warhammer 40,000 rulebook, which has also a lot of lore and background material. It's a separate purchase, but I think it's worth it because that way you have the rules in a physical form that you can open and refer to quickly. Step three, build and paint. Once you've got an army, you have to cut the army off of their little plastic sprues and then shave off the plastic mold lines and sprue tabs and glue the models together and then prime them with white or gray spray paint called primer and then paint them. For that, you need modeling tools, clippers, knife, file, paintbrushes, paint. Now, Citadel offers lots of tutorials at citadelcolor.com slash getting dash started to help you get started. But amazingly, you can also just go to a Games Workshop or Warhammer store, walk in and ask about the free miniature of the month. A, a, a person from the store will give you a free miniature and sit next to you while you build that miniature. So you learn literally everything you need to know to assemble your miniature there in the store. You'll still have to paint it, but Citadel Contrast and Vallejo Express Color are both excellent lines of paint. I heartily recommend them. They almost dare you to paint your models poorly. I mean, they're just such great paints, really. They're really, really easy. Even I make models that look vaguely good with these paints, and I can't paint. And it takes months, this whole process. The good news is that it's a lot of fun, but you do have to factor it in. From the time you decided to play Warhammer, you're probably like well into your third month by the time you actually play Warhammer. Step four, get terrain and dice and rulers. Once you've got the rules and an army, there's little to do but play, right? No. In reality, you also need terrain. Those are like ruins of buildings or walls or other obstacles. And you need objective markers. Now, for that, you can use glass gaming tokens or coins or whatever, and a battle map, and dice, and rulers, and all the other things that you need for a game. Some of these components are more common than others. I mean, you probably have a handful of dice lying around if you play games, but terrain can be a challenge. Luckily, you can either buy terrain or build it yourself from junk. I used little 
plastic pots that you get when you buy a seedling for the garden. I painted them with craft paint and set them up on my battlefield, and they look vaguely like, like you know, shipping containers or, or buildings. There are a bunch of great YouTube channels where people just build terrain for war games from junk. So they're great to watch, get inspired by, and then go create some of your own. Or again, just take the easy way out and purchase terrain from Games Workshop. You can also buy a battle mat. Now, I use Battletech mats because they're paper and they're really big and they've got a bunch of, like, extra stuff on them that you could use for your own homebrew rules, but... There are lots of battle mats out there, and they add a little flavor to your gaming table. I mean, instead of instead of your little toy soldiers running around on polished wood of your gaming table or the felt top or whatever, they're, they're now running around on a photo of a desert planet or, or a, uh, an industrial complex. It's not a big deal. It's not necessary. It's nice to have. Step five, play the game. Eventually, you get to the point where you can play the game, so go play it. Wargaming. I, I don't know of any other game with so many required tasks before you can actually start playing. It's almost overwhelming. The trickiest mental part, I think, is juggling the requirements for an army with the physical miniatures you can buy. Like, for Snarling Badgers, Space Station Zero, and Rain in Hell, building an army is pretty easy. You grab a bunch of unique miniatures, you assign them roles as defined in the rulebook, and then you start playing. Those war games are specifically designed for generic models. For Warhammer, though, the rules are pretty specific to the miniatures Games Workshop produces. They're written for each other. The rules and the miniatures literally go together. So when you see a unit of intercessors in the book, well, the data sheet for that unit is written with the assumption that you're using a box of intercessor models so they can refer to specific weapons or a set of specific weapons that came in the box. Now, you could grab a random miniature from anywhere, but it does start to get confusing when you're playing and your data sheet is referencing a bolter and a flamer, and you can't tell which of the weapons on your generic model actually has because your generic model is actually just holding um, a knife. Luckily, the 10th edition of Warhammer 40,000 makes building an army really, really easy. As I've said, you can just buy a combat patrol box and you're done. Now, I'm sure a lot of people find the process of building an army roster a lot of fun, but I can't imagine putting in the time and effort of coming up with a list based both on uh, cost and coolness, and then building and painting that army, all for a game I haven't even tried yet, or if I have tried the game, I haven't tried it with that army yet. So don't do that. Just buy Combat Patrol. And of course, the advantage there is that the Combat Patrol box that you do buy, you'll eventually be able to expand with other models if you are really, really set on developing a 1,000-point or 2,000-point or 3,000-point army. It's never a purchase that you can't use, and I mean that. I mean, even if you stop playing Warhammer 40k, you can probably still use those models with other rule sets because the other rule sets aren't written specifically for a system, so you're going to be using quote-unquote random miniatures anyway. So anyway, you're busy and you have to go build and paint a bunch of models, so I'll let you go. Hopefully this has helped make it easier for you to know how to get started. Remember, Wargaming is kind of a campaign all its own, and by that I mean it's a real-world campaign for an in-game campaign. You're going to go on a journey. Luckily, this journey is a lot of fun every step of the way, so enjoy it. Thanks for watching.